Hi, hope you're all doing well. Today I want to share a quick overview of my plugin for NeoBeam with you. I'm talking about NVimDB, which is an interactive database client for NeoBeam. First things first, let's start a database or two. So let's go ahead and create a new Docker Compose file and let's open it up in NeoVim. Uh, I'm gonna use Postgres since I guess it's the most popular one. So this Compose manifest just spins up a new Postgres instance which will be reachable on our local host. Now let's save this and then open up a new shell and let's spin up the container. This might take a while if you haven't downloaded the Postgres image yet. Uh, in my case, it's already cached and the database is ready in no time. Okay, so back in NeoVim. We are now ready to start using DB. I'll assume that we have DB already installed and configured. If you don't know how to do that, please look into the readme. Also, if you would like me to talk more about specific DB configuration parameters, please let me know in the comments below. We can open up DB by using colon DB open. So now that DB is open, we can see that we have four different panels. The first one is the editor, which is used to, well, edit nodes. These nodes are persistent queries like in many other SQL clients. The second panel is the drawer, which has a tree view of previously mentioned nodes and a tree view of connections and their sources. There is currently nothing here because we aren't connected to any database yet. We'll do that in a second. Then the third pane is the call history and the last one displays results of queries we execute. Let's navigate back to the drawer and let's add a connection to our Postgres container. The connections are specified using sources, which by the way are user configurable and scriptable modules. And some of these sources are provided out of the box for convenience as well. These built-in sources are the environment variable source, then the memory source, and also the last one which we're going to use and which is the file source. I currently have configured the default file source which uses a file called persistence.json. We can then edit this file directly or more conveniently add a new connection using the UI. So let's do this just now. I'm gonna name our connection just an example Postgres. Type is also Postgres. And URL is defined based on what we added to the Docker Compose manifest. Okay, so once we save this, the connection is visible in our drawer. Now that we have the connection configured, we can also edit it or delete it but let's leave it as is for now. When we unfold this connection, we can do a couple of things. First, we can switch databases if the driver supports that, like this. And second, we can see the full structure of the selected database. So tables and views are grouped into schemas and we can view each table's columns as well. Now let's navigate back to the editor pane and let's write some queries. I'll create a new table and then fill it with some example data. Now let's save the default notepad and let's run the queries. In call log we can see that the query was successful so now let's try and query for some data. Now we can see a few things. A new table popped up in the drawer. Then we can see two executed statements in the call history. More on that in a second. And finally of course we can see the results in the result pane. When we're in the results pane, we can also copy the results as CSV or JSON. Let's try to copy, for example, these two rows as JSON. I'll paste the results to editor so you can see how it looks like. Note that we missed, in my opinion, the biggest feature of DB, which is that the results are paged to us with an iterator. So this basically means that if you have a very large result set, DB will start displaying the results immediately. You still need to wait if you want to see the last row though, so there's unfortunately no way around that. Okay, so now let's put my claims to the test. I'll just remove what we have in the notepad and I'll create a very large table with this code snippet. So I'll just copy it to the editor and now let's run this thing. So while this is executing, let's talk a bit about the call history. This pane shows a history of all past queries around on this connection and their current status. We can, for example, cancel an ongoing query if we wanted like the one 
which we are currently running, but let's leave it running for now. The result of successful queries can also be retrieved back from history on demand. So this also works if we restart NeoVim in a different session. Right, so our query finished its execution and left us with a new table with about 20 million rows. So now let's try to retrieve, let's say, 5 million at once. As we said before, the results are available instantly even though not all rows were retrieved yet. We can navigate the result set by turning the pages or navigating to the first and last page. Now let's look at the notes section of the drawer. We have global and local notes. Global notes are available all the time and local notes are available just when the connection they belong to is active. So if we create a new note in the local section, it's going to be visible only when the example Postgres connection is active. You can also create, rename and delete notes with all the expected key maps. So yeah, I mean, this is basically it. You can start using DB right away, but uh, there's just one more thing I'd like to share with you though, the API. We can access basically all the things we did with key maps and commands using the API as well. The important thing to know is that the API is made out of two parts though. The first one is core, which is more or less a wrapper around the backend Go code. And the other one is the UI API, which exposes the functionality of all four UI panels. To learn more about the DB API, we can also ask for help using colon h and then db.rf.api and then .core or .ui. And yeah, I mean, that's it. I hope you found the video interesting. And yeah, you can subscribe if you want to see more of DB in action. For example, I plan on making a video on how to create your own window layout for DB. Anyways, thank you for your time and have a nice day. Bye.